All right, I want to start talking about a new topic, and um, that topic is microbiology this time. So I want to start out with microbe diversity and origin. Although this is not always the common way most people follow the book in a linear fashion, I'm going to do it slightly differently. And we're going to go through kind of an uh, introduction to the different types of microbes and their origin of life and things of that nature first to kind of give everybody an understanding of what's going on. Um, so anyway, microbes are commonly defined as living organisms that require a microscope to be seen. So the microbes, you need the aid of a microscope in order to see them. That's why they're called microbes, because they're microscopic. And from this point, I want to start talking about the characteristics of viruses, okay? Uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, But I'm going to start with viruses. Now, some people, there's some debation to this, whether viruses are living or non-living. For our purposes, and, and in my opinion, they are, they are not living. They are acellular or not cellular. Um, they cannot reproduce without a host. They have no metabolism of their own. And the virus simply consists of a capsid or a protein coat that protects the nucleic acid, whether it's DNA or RNA. And the thing about that that's interesting is they a virus can have DNA or RNA, and it generally has a much tighter and compact genome, so it's a small genome, fairly easy to sequence. Um, however, it, you know, it can only have one or the other. And one of the requirements for life is that you have both DNA and RNA, okay? And also that you have ribosomes, which a virus does not have, okay? So they don't have ribosomes, they don't have DNA and RNA, they have one or the other, and it could be single-stranded or double-stranded, it depends on the uh, particular virus. But um, those are the, basically the general characteristics of a virus. Now... A virus is not necessarily, you know, a bacteria, uh, of course, but it still fits in the category of microbiology. It is something that microbiologists um, study, and that's why we talk about it. So prokaryotic cells, we're talking now about bacteria, and they have a cell membrane, okay, but they also have a cell wall, and that cell wall is generally composed of peptidyl peptidoglycan, which is like, a, which is basically a protein and um, polysaccharide component. It has two different components. Okay, and it makes up the cell wall. Um, so they have what's known as a nucleoid and not a nucleus, so don't get it confused because it's not a membrane-bound structure. Okay, it's a nucleoid where the DNA can be found. Okay, it's a region within the bacteria where the, or within the prokaryotic cell where the DNA can be found. Okay, so they also have a single circular chromosome, which is a lot different from um, what we have. We have, uh, humans have linear chromosomes, okay? And um, so, so there's a different, there's slightly different structure there. It is double-stranded DNA usually. I mean, these are, of course, generalizations, so please don't, oh, don't say, well, I know there's this, this exception to the rule. Of course there's exceptions to the rule. There's always exceptions to the rule. But in, if we're talking in general, then these are the effects that these are the kind of characteristics that prokaryotic cells would have. Now they have a 70s ribosome, and these are known as Fedberg um, units. The 70s and that and basically what the 70s is this is the ribos this is the complete ribosome, both subunits together. Okay, um, and we're going to talk more about why the 70s is, um, ribosome is important. They also have metabolism. Um, they do not have a nucleus, so the things they don't have is they don't have a nucleus, they don't have membrane-bound organelles, and they don't have histone proteins, all of which are found in eukaryotic cells, okay? And you might have guessed that's where we're going next. So eukaryotic cells have a much, are much larger, first of all. So they're, you know, prokaryotic cells are generally one to five micrometers in, in length. Um, this is not, obviously, pro, uh, eukaryotic cells can be much bigger. Um, although some are small too. So they do have a cell membrane or a plasma membrane. They have membrane-bound organelles, and those membrane-bound organelles include the um, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, uh, lysosomes, peroxisomes, mitochondria, chloroplasts, okay, are some of the main ones. Um, plant cells also have a uh, cell wall, as do fungi. And um, eukaryotes have what's known as an ADS ribosome, okay? They're an, they have an ADS ribosome instead of a 70S ribosome. So again, look, we have a fundamental difference there. 
Um, another fundamental difference is we see linear chromosomes located inside a double membrane bound, a double membrane structure, which is called the nucleus. It's a double membrane structure. It has pores which allow for um, the transfer of materials from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. Um, they also um, eukaryotic cells also have flagella and cilia, which are also found in bacteria or prokaryotes. But um, they're much different, okay, structurally, and um, sometimes also in relation to function. And here, here's where we get into this fundamental difference. So there is a fundamental difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and it's their ribosomes. Prokaryotes have a 70S ribosome. Eukaryotes have an 80S ribosome. So you might say, well, what's the point of that? Who cares? Um, well, the point of that is that the ribosomes can be, are, 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 you know, they are definitely targets for antibiotics. Okay, um, and because of that fundamental difference, it's what prevents your cells from being damaged by, say, an antibiotic. I mean, if you have an antibiotic that's going to specifically attack a 70S ribosome, it's not going to affect the 80S ribosome commonly found in the eukaryotes. Okay, so that's one of the reasons, and that's one of the fundamental differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes.